Pete, thank you so much. I know we've been chatting for like 15, 20 minutes uh, off air uh, about this incredible episode, but Pete, thank you so much for making some time today to be on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm really excited to get this episode out. I've got tons of questions. We've been talking. Um, I've actually written down some questions based on what you said that I think I'm going to add to the list. But before we get to that, rapid fire. Quick questions, quick answers. Are you ready? Sure. Let's do it. Favorite song right now? River by Something Briggs. <laughs> River by Something Briggs. We'll find it. We'll find it. What's your favorite movie? Uh, Lord of the Rings. Is there a particular one? Second. Lord of the Rings 2. Never watched them. I don't think I ever will. Oh, Just putting it out there. Missing out in life. <laughs> missing out in life. Be cool. Hey, uh, favorite book? The Bible. The Bible. I like it. Yeah. Favorite color? Oh, cobalt blue. Sorry, what was that? Cobalt blue. Cobalt blue. Specific type of blue. Give me an example of where I might have seen co cobalt blue. Uh, the zoo, the color of the Zoom icon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> How did you come across that as your favorite color? I just saw it one day, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, it's actually in a lot of icons. I'm looking at Safari and yeah. Twitter maybe. Yeah. It's cobalt blue. Oh. It's electric blue, it's vibrant, it's got life, it's beautiful. Not just blue, everybody. It's not just blue, it's cobalt blue. I like it, I like it. What's your go-to meal? Oh, my go-to meal, oh, making a smoothie. Smoothie, okay. <laughs> like, is, a, is it a fruit smoothie? Is it a vegetable smoothie? Like, what's whatever your- Whatever I have in the fridge. I need whatever can go in there, I like it. What's your favorite TV show? I would have to say, um, uh, oh, it's the, oh my God, it's at the top of my tongue. Oh, I, um, <laughs> who's that girl? It's Jess. <laughs> You've lost me. <laughs> is it on, what, on free to air TV, Netflix? Is it a, is it a on Netflix? Right. The, name. the listeners are going to know exactly what it is and they're going to be like, I know what it is. It's this one. Okay. I love it. What's your, what was your first job? Harvey Norman. Harvey Norman. Yeah, selling cameras. <laughs> How life has changed. <laughs> I like it. Who was, your, um, who was your biggest celebrity or sporting idol growing up? Still is, I would say, Lauren Hill. I, I'm going to say I don't know who that is. Lauren Hill? Sister Act. Oh, okay, cool. If I see a feature, I'll be like, okay, cool. But I don't know the name, so. Amazing. She's amazing, yeah. I like that. I like that. What is, uh, Rachel, one of your pet hates? <sighs> my pet hates, oh my goodness. Um, people spitting on the street. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> yeah. Spitting yeah. on the street. <laughs> like just on the footpath, just like whatever. Disgusting, yeah. We can dive into later on what's actually in sal saliva. Oh my goodness. Lots of, things. <laughs> Lots of not good things. That's why you don't mean to do it on the street. Um, are you more of a book or audio book person? Book, definitely. book. Summer or winter? Summer for sure. What is something that you haven't done yet that you really want to do though? Bungee jumping. Oh, I like it. Have you been skydiving? I have, yeah, yeah, my yeah. Love that. That's good. Sum up your mindset in one word. My mindset? Oh, nature heals. That's two words, but I'm going to say we'll, we'll let it pay. <laughs> nature heals. I like it. What's been your proudest moment, Beck, personally and your proudest moment professionally? I'd probably say moving into state on my own not knowing anyone and just starting fresh. And then professionally, wow, I've definitely come a long way. I've done so much in such a short period. Probably, oh my goodness, um, having a radio show. Oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. One of my biggest accomplishments, yeah. I like that, having a radio show. This is an interesting one. 
tell us something that no one knows about you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Rapid Fire and welcome to Jamie's podcast. Far out, something that no one knows about me. Um, I always wanted to be a boy growing up. Really? <laughs> and what happened? Did you just like get over that? Yeah, being a chick is so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like yeah. that. Um, <laughs> wanted to be a boy growing up. How cool is that? <laughs> Three questions to go. All right. If you could choose to have lunch with any one person in the world, dead or alive, past or present, anyone, you've got a two hour time limit, who would it be? And where would you have lunch? Um, it would be Jesus. Nice. Yep. Maybe at where he, where he um, walked on water. Oh, See okay. yeah. Where he walked on water, nice little yeah, picnic. You could pit, yeah, we could walk on water together. Together. <laughs> what a moment. Yeah. What a moment. I like that. Second last question. What was 10 year old Rebecca like? Oh my goodness. 10 year old. Definitely. I'd probably say I've got the same personality. <laughs> really bubbly out there. Wanted to be a boy. Yeah, what are you <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like yeah. it. Love that. Last question, easy one. Who is your favorite superhero? Oh, definitely Wonder Woman. Love For that. Sure. For sure. She's cool. Hey, that's rapid fire. Well done. It is. That's so intense. It is. I don't I, and I did I give you any of the questions before? No, 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 never, never, never pre-frame it. I just say we're going to do rapid fire, but I don't give any of the questions. I like it. Yeah. The, the color got me your favorite color. Like I was like, she even had like the detail. That's incredible. I That's like it. Hey, so diverse. The blue, because there's like a billion shades of blue. And then we've got the one that you love the most, which is the Zoom icon for those listening. Go and check out your Zoom app and you'll know exactly what color it is. But hey, Rebecca, like I said at the start, thank you so much for making some time to, to jump on today and share so much of the incredible knowledge you ever mentioned today. Like you've done so much professionally. Um, and personally, I love all your content. I said it earlier before we, we came online um, of how much I've taken from you and implemented a lot of it and seeing incredible results right away. And I think that, this is again me my opinion is that you make it cool fun modern to speak about gut health and immune systems and and the body yeah. you know um so thank you for that and i'm sure there's so many other people who have taken a lot from it not just me but what what made you become more active online and put more content out there and, and build the brand so much online yeah so there's so much information out there and you always want to go back to research. Mm, mm. So I also studied personal training because I would overhear personal trainers at the gym. I was studying naturopathy at the time. I would hear uh, trainers at the time, just overhear them saying, yeah, tuna's okay. And yes, dairy's <laughs> okay. And, and I thought, wow, I really want to study personal training so I can see the nutrition, you know, what they, what they get taught. And then when I was doing it, it was real old school learning, you know, the old school pyramid. Food pyramid, um, yeah. Pyramid, yeah. And I actually said to them, wow, information has changed since then. And information's constantly changing. So especially when it comes to gut health, we're learning totally. so much more about the microbiome and the wonderful world. Uh, so, yeah, I just re really want people to... And I want to present it in a way that's relatable and understandable. For example, I've got a really popular one about gluten. Um, I put up a post about gluten and how you go overseas and you can eat pasta and uh, croissants and you don't get bloated. And then as soon as you come to Australia, come back home and you have a little piece of bread, you get bloated and you break out in rashes. And I see this often. And it's because in Australia, we spray our wheat so much and people are actually oh, wow. not reacting to the gluten they're reacting to the chemicals sprayed on gluten <laughs> yeah so wow. uh, i know so interesting um so yeah i really want to put information out there that's based on research um i'm actually a total nerd jamie <laughs> <laughs> so i have my own medical netflix that Love i that. aim to watch every night and it's just because 
medicine is constantly changing. I'm learning mm. so much more about the microbiome. At the moment, I'm writing, I'm doing a 21 day program, putting that together. And, you know, I was typing about the microbiome and how we used to learn how the womb was sterile. You know, there was no bacteria as a baby. Whereas now we're learning that generationally our microbiome is based on our mother's microbiome and her microbiome is based on her Her mother's microbiome. Yes, it's like she passed down. So, and because we have 3.3 million genes in our microbiome, this is huge. So we want to not weaken our genetics um, generation by generation. And there are so many factors that affect our microbiome so many factors and we want to we want healthy children we want healthy totally. generations uh so yeah i just really mm. want to educate people on how to look after their microbiome because honestly i remember at university you know naturopathy 101 is all diseases start in the gut you know and you don't realize that until you till years later uh, we were so in in uh, drilled into us that treat the gut treat the liver, you know, those two mega systems. Uh, and you'll be right, you know, like you've covered a lot. You've treated a lot. And it wasn't until practice, clinical practice, I'm like, wow, everything is linked to liver health. and wow. gut. Yeah, so. Where it um, all sort of the foundation, where it all stems back to, there's always a start somewhere there absolutely. that you can address it. Absolutely. And, and also the ancient Egyptians <laughs> used to worship the intestines <laughs> back in the day. And now we know why. Yeah. So it's crazy because ancestrally I'm half Egyptian. So maybe I was meant to, who totally. knows? maybe I was meant to learn about this, you know, my ancestors. The, the, the stars aligned. <laughs> totally. They're like, Rachel's the one. She yeah. is the one. Let's pass it on to her to then pass it on to the to the many people out there and and honestly like i said like your one thing i find and the same thing we we're sort of touching on before we went live is about like the whole topic of of digestion and and poos and and the what that people used to what like you can find out of the information in there yeah. i think the way that you've made it okay to talk about it i think it makes it more comfortable for people to want to talk about it and then maybe look into it a bit more and say, cool, well, maybe there's something here that I can learn, or maybe I should go and see Beck and, and find out what's actually going on here. Like, was that again, something that you thought, Hey, I'm going to become the, the poo fairy and, and talk about that. Or was that just like, I need to really share it and I need to give the content out. Yeah. So how I became a poo fairy, <laughs> uh, I was doing. You dress up as that for Halloween. I uh, no, I didn't. That no. would be cool. Wouldn't it? I know. I people should. be like, who are you? I'm the poo fairy. Like, what's your yeah. problem? <laughs> well, I start, I start, I became a colon hydrotherapist. Yep. Again, which is something I didn't plan on being. Uh, and then, so obviously was learning more about the colon. And then I was working in an integrative medical clinic and they said, oh, Beck, because you do uh, colon hydrotherapy, do you want to be our gut naturopath? And I thought, yeah, absolutely. I do. <laughs> so, and then I, my whole world opened up to the microbiome and it's just, um, it blows my mind. It really blows my mind. Love that. Love that. Well, I have to say, thank you so much for putting that content out. I'm sure, like I said earlier, there's so many people out there who are, who are, who are grateful that you've, that you've dived into this world and maybe from the ancestors they've passed it down to you but again look, where did the whole natural medicine come into it from you like was that from in high school like this is what I want to do did something happen we like I want to learn more about this how did you get into it in the first place yeah so I actually had a really interesting journey when I was younger I wanted to be a dietitian and basically uh, cure world hunger that was my I remember in uh, human development class or, or health and human development class, we would talk about how there was a solution where the perfect balance of salt, sugar and water. And it would, um, because so many children in third world countries would uh, die of di- a diarrhea. So to rehydrate them and just get their basics. And I, that was the light bulb moment for me. Wow. About 15, I thought, I want to solve world hunger. You know, my little... <laughs> 15 year old mind. So I started uh, with nutrition and then to get into dietetics. And then while I was studying nutrition, 
I was studying at a university where all my friends, a lot of my friends were doing naturopathy and I had never even heard of a naturopath in my life. So I was working in a health food store at the time and people would ask me about herbs and herbal medicine. And I would think, I don't know about herbal medicine. And yeah, <laughs> Jamie, I'm such a nerd and I had FOMO. So <laughs> <laughs> my friends said to me, Beck, it's, it's uh, naturopathy is, is, is nutrition plus more, plus herbs. So I swapped and then I had no idea my whole world was going to change. Wow. And the course was so much longer than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> what did I sign up for? Such a big umbrella. There's, uh, I, I always wondered why I had to do so much counseling and psychology. Mm, mm. Now I totally get it in clinical practice because I'm spending so much time with patients. You know, I'm spending an hour, an hour and a half with them. I'm trying to get to the root of what's going on, trauma. Totally. So, there's a lot of psychology uh, that, that needs to happen there. Um, and then there's also homeopathy and then there's food as medicine and then there's flower essences, which works on emotions and then there's herbs. So it's just, it's a huge world. And I think one of the best things about my job is that I have so many um, pathways that I can go, you know, it's mm. not just one, you know, so I'm like, oh, maybe they do need flower essences. Maybe they need some emotional support. Um, maybe they need nutritional medicine. Maybe maybe this her these herbs would be great. So the best thing about it is there's no side effects. It's totally safe. Um, yeah. So. How good is that? I, I think, did you know that I'm learning all that it would, but did you go into it and I want to learn everything so I can help in many different ways? Or was it more just like, this is all everything you need now go? Well, part of natural, like part of the course was you just learn everything. Everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's good that way then. Not like the PT course, which is old school and they're teaching the old way of food. Yeah, I did. Okay. Try, um, I did my cert three and four at two different places, but cert four was at a really holistic place where it was awesome. all, I don't even think we got taught how to carry weights. Like it wasn't <laughs> at all. It was really functional, you know, checking their posture first. It was really mm. holistic. Um, it was just in cert three, the nutrition was just way outdated. Or maybe they can hire you to rewrite the certificate offered, uh, guidelines. Offered, <laughs> actually offered already. There you go, guys. Huh? Did, did they take you on board or what? <laughs> They're probably no. still teaching it now. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the um because we even were touching on earlier when you what, what was the exact number i think it was 80 percent the gut health related to the immune system yeah yeah so 80 percent of our immune system is in the gut it, it's it resides in the lining a very thin lining of the gut so that's why it's really important to look after your microbiome absolutely very absolutely um uh, organ actually. yeah yeah why i i asked that is because Obviously, at the moment, it's a very, very big topic, this whole thing of COVID. Um, and, you know, we've come very far from what we knew about it two years ago, or, you know, 18 months ago, whatever, um, to be where we are now. Someone listening, someone watching, tuning in, for them, yes, there's, you know, what the media tell you to do and like all good. What can people do to improve their immune system? What can people do to improve their chances of not catching COVID-19? Let's even put COVID-19 aside, like not just getting sick in general. Like how can they just make their bodies stronger, their immune system stronger, just to fight off these diseases that come through? Is there a, I know you just sp spoken about, you learned so many different ways and it's not always one way, but is there some key things that people can start to think about, look at, eat, drink, where does it start? I know it's a very big question. <laughs> it's huge. Oh my goodness. I need a whole. This is I another need... episode just on this, on this topic. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's multifactorial. So there's environmental. So things like mold uh, can trigger the immune system. Things like uh, xenoestrogens, which are chemicals in the, um, in the environment that leach on to our estrogen receptors. Um, so there's a lot of chemicals um, that that can enter, you know, through our skin, through our um, respiratory. So, so there's environmental, and then there's and also chemicals through our water as well. They can really so things like chlorine mm -hmm. basically damage gut flora. And then we have obviously diet and lifestyle. So a lot of people think they have a good diet, and this is also why I put 
a, not controversial things, but I really want to wake people up to based on research. So for example, last week I put up about, I posted about salmon, you know, salmon's healthy, but which salmon are you mm, buying? I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, um, if you're buying salmon that's farmed, that's considered junk food. That's how much chemicals it has in it. Uh, and wow. same tuna you know a lot of people are buying canned tuna tuna 40 percent of our mercury levels comes from tuna um it just gets accumulated it's really wow. really scary so things like heavy metals is so uh underestimated and again we're exposed to so many heavy metals in the environment in our water in our food uh so we want to minimize as much as exposure. possible yeah, so um, so that's really important. Um, and then and then stress and fear and all these emotional. Um, so a lot of our emotions get stored in the gut as well. Uh, so so managing stress is so important. So important. Is that so, something that can be done through food, or is that more of a? I'm sure food plays a part, but is that? Like what's what would someone's like? And again, the the current climate, people's jobs are on the line financially. There's so much stress out there. Sure. Is it something that you can people can address with food? Is it a is it a psychology thing? What's what's been your experience and, and take yeah, on that? So, so there's so much research on being out in nature, even just 30 minutes in nature, and it doesn't have to be you have to drive two hours to the forest. It could be. <laughs> It could be your backyard. Just a park, yeah. But yeah, park. Um, yeah, finding somewhere local. And one of the beauties, one of the good things that came out of lockdown is that people were exploring their areas more True. and discovering yeah. hidden yeah. places, you know? Yeah. So that's definitely um, one good thing. And yeah, so so in nature, nature, honestly, it's why one of the questions you asked. Totally, me, you did. Nature yeah. heals. Also because fresh oxygen, you know, it converts. Mm carbon dioxide into oxygen oxygen is so important for our immune systems this is also why the big city living in the big city there's a lot of pollution and that mm. takes such a big toll on our immune system as well um, compared to living living rural totally yeah <laughs> away from it each. yeah absolutely uh so another stress um technique that is so much research behind it is breathing. I know it sounds really cliche, but a lot of people don't know how to breathe properly and they're breathing through their lungs, but really we're meant to be breathing through our diaphragm much lower. Mm. Uh, so, so breathing in, for example, for four seconds and then exhaling longer, so about five seconds. So what we're doing is we're releasing carbon dioxide which is acidic. So we're actually alkalizing the body. Mm. Well, another thing that's really important for the immune system is an uh, acidic and alkalized balance. Yeah. So a lot of disease uh, and illness and cancers thrive in an acidic environment and they cannot survive in an alkalized environment. Uh, so when you, when we look at people's diets, I actually get patients to write a diet diary just for a week or a few days. And I highlight, okay, this is inflammatory. This is inflammatory. Look at the balance. You actually have a really inflammatory diet. Wow. Yeah. Um, but they don't realize that until they actually write it down. Stop and look at it and take it all in. Yeah. 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 Uh, so like I said before, water as well. Uh, even your tap water. Uh, sorry, even your shower water. So breathing that in. So um, when I wrote a really good blog on my website about this, is your shower, it's called, is your shower making you sick? And it's the chlorine from the tap um, mixing with heat. And so it, uh, when we breathe that in, very, very dangerous for our lungs. <laughs> is your shower making you sick? Yeah, really good blog. Definitely recommend it. I'm on it. I am on yeah, it. And you can fix it just with a shower filter. Um, it's about $180. Um, you'll notice that the water doesn't smell. <laughs> There's a lot of odor in the water. Um, oh, also, last year I was in Melbourne for a few months and I noticed that when I had a shower in Melbourne, I was coming out so itchy, so itchy. And 
I felt like I was going to scratch my whole body off. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's the chlorine in the water because I've had a shower filter where I was. So I noticed a huge difference. You would have and noticed straight people, away. Yeah. You know, if they went to the dermatologist, they would just put a cream and do you know what I mean? So it's all about finding the root. And again, we're just, it's chemicals that we're exposed to, but where are they coming from? And honestly, Jamie, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. So I'm like, I'm like, already gobsmacked and we're what, 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in. Yeah. yeah. So h- how does this happen though? Like, how is this? I'm curious to understand if the, we, if you know, that means someone else knows. And if, how are they allowed to do this? Yeah, it's just not regulated. A lot of our water isn't regulated. I mean, a lot of countries ban um, fluoride in the water in Australia. We have, there's just no reason to add fluoride in our water Um, again fluoride really affects microbiome Uh, it gets stored in the brain it's been linked to lower iq levels um, dementia it's just crazy jamie Um, so yeah if someone listening or watching this is going to be like okay cool so what do i do wrap myself up in glad wrap and like not touch anything eat anything smell anything because I, I that would be there at first yeah, well bex just said everything's you know got to you know but then you you gave one really quickly with the shower about the filter so where do you start like what do you what do you do yeah so the first thing uh because i thought tuna was good i know i used to eat that much tuna when i was you know in the gym and thought that's what you do Oh, and they're always on special, aren't they? 99 they are. Yeah. Bloody coals <laughs> and woolies. Yeah. So, so we literally cannot live without clean water and clean air. So the first two things I tell people to get is an air purifier. You know, it needs to have a HEPA filter. You would be surprised how many toxins are in the home. Uh, we just can't see them. We just can't see them. So a lot of people who, you know, have breathing problems, um, any skin issues, I say get a uh, a filter, get an air purifier, different to a humidifier. So so humidifier is great for mold, but Mm. you also want to be cleaning the air. So what I tell people to do is uh, have it in their bedrooms while they're sleeping and then move it to the lounge room during the day. During the day. Yeah. So also, and then a water filter. So just get one that's more than the jug. Um, the jug's just not enough when, you know, when it comes out straight it's away. Spoiled, yeah. not, you want one with a ceramic dome um, that's going to really filter any uh, chemical. So drinking water, shower water, hand washing water, like how far do you go? Oh, I mean, I caught up with a friend yesterday and she said, oh, Beck, you inspired me so much with your post. Um, I got the whole house done. You know? Oh, wow. The whole Every house. Tap. Yeah. Yeah. You can install it. It's actually not that expensive. No, no way. Um, yeah. When you, can, when you know how many chemicals are in the water, it's actually not, um, it's an investment. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's priceless. We've got to think as well, like, a, a water filter might cost, just had to do the whole house 300 bucks. Let's say you don't do that. And in five years time, you get sick and you end up spending $3,000 on medicine, doctor's bills, et cetera. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 300 but bucks yeah, a day. Yeah, what is just one, <laughs> just one, <laughs> one part, but they're the two biggest ones. And then also limiting our exposure to pesticides. Um, so really, I'm a real big advocate for farmer's markets. Um, finding your closest one every single person has a local farmer's market know when when they're on put it in your diary um, because they are going to be picking the veggies that week as opposed to going to the supermarket where it was picked six months ago and i know this because i was actually on this too management yeah i was on a business management uh excursion in high school not health related at all and we went to one of the big chains warehouses and just seeing their whole production process and we walked past the gigantic fridge shed and they told us oh this is where we uh, store the fruit and veg and it can be picked up for up to six months (laughs) in advance And I thought the vitamins are gone, especially vitamin C. So even when you're um, 
you know, trying to eat more fresh fruit and veggies, the vitamin C content is gone. So when you're like completely it, gone or like is lowered. So every day, once it's picked off the tree, your vitamin C reduces by about 20% a day. So it only really lasts five days, maybe. Days. That's what I mean. Yeah. So in Melbourne, I went to a farmer's market, little old Italian couple, beautiful, didn't speak a lot of English. And I asked them, when did you pick these? And they said, our root vegetables, we pick them two days before the farmer's market and all the greens and all the other veggies uh, the day before. So wow. I'm not, that is really fresh. I'm getting my vitamins. It doesn't get any better, really. Well, obviously, better is taking it straight off the tree, but yeah. A day is wow. pretty good. A day is pretty good. That's so, much better than six months. Yeah. So limiting our exposure to pesticides because to be honest, our body evolutionary, we don't know what to do with pesticides. We, you know, they get stored in the brain. They get stored in the lining of the gut. That's it's going to significantly affect our immune system. So that's, so clean water, uh, air purifier, clean, clean air and local produce. So important. And also what's in season. So mm. we're not meant to be eating foods, summer foods in winter. We're not Agreed. meant to. So mm. you know, when you see in the supermarket, we're getting oranges from the USA. It's crazy. <laughs> it's a problem. And the vitamin C is gone. Um, yeah, so we're meant to be eating local local produce. I love that. I love that. What's, what's one of your pet hates with, again, be very mindful of how I ask this question and how you answer this question. But what's one of your pet hates of the, the mainstream media marketing around health and nutrition and what they put out there to yeah. compare to like what the truth actually really is? Yes, I really wish there was, um, they, they got a dietitian or um, an integrative doctor or a naturopath to really speak about um, the importance of local organic food, um, clean water, uh, getting vi like vitamin D, especially vitamin D sunlight exposure. Vitamin D is huge for the immune system. And there has been studies that low vitamin D is linked to COVID, like increases wow. of getting COVID. So vitamin D is one of the most important things um, to check. I get all my patients to check them by annually, really need to know where your vitamin D levels are. Uh, every single person I've seen in Melbourne are deficient, are deficient. But also the they don't they're not aware. Most people aren't aware that they're vitamin D deficient because in the blood test, it's only the level is uh, you're deficient if you're less than fifty. Whereas that's not optimal. We want to be optimal Absolutely. and illness. So in order to uh, optimal levels is actually a hundred and above. Wow. Minimum 80. Yeah, really important. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and vitamin D is uh, such an it's actually more of a hormone than a vitamin. Um, but we need it for so many things in the body. It helps to carry nutrients into the Is cell. there a minimum sort of vitamin D intake that people just like? Okay, we're, we're I'm in Melbourne, right? So we and you, you know, Melbourne, you don't get the most amount of sun. So is there like 10 minutes in a day is good, 30 minutes in a day is good? Like, is there a particular part on the body that you should really or just in general get? the sun somehow sure i actually wrote a really good ebook about this <laughs> i love it i need to get all your content and it's like consume it all yeah really good ebook about how to slow so it's called can you eat your sunscreen again hmm. we're so um we're so pushed to slip stop slap in australia um, but ironically a lot of the chemicals that are in a lot of these sunscreens not all but a lot of commercially brands uh, contain chemicals in there that have been shown to are linked to a lot of uh, hormone cancers so it's quite ironic that slip slop slap protect yourself from the sun that gives you uh, skin cancer however these sunscreens give you other types of cancers so the sun's not bad Again, like everything in nature, we need a balance. So in my ebook, I really teach you how to adapt to the sun. So, um, so that's why I want people to read it a few months before uh, summer hits. So then you can so adapt. go read it now, basically. When you listen to this, go and get it straight away because summer's coming. <laughs> yeah, really good. So also foods to help you protect from the sun, uh, sunshine as well um so there are incredible types of foods for example are you familiar with the cruciferous vegetables 
So they're your bok choy, broccoli, cauliflower. I love, oh, I love those broccoli. Yeah, awesome. Broccolini is like my go-to. Is broccolini good? Awesome. It's amazing. Love that. Yeah. Love that. I eat so that, that like every day. That gives you 48 hour protection from the sun, like the, the antioxidants in there. Like um, as in from burning or? Burning, yeah. So I had a girlfriend in Melbourne who before she studied uh, nutrition, she would eat whatever fast food and processed foods and she would burn really quickly. And then when she was studying nutrition, she ate more fruit and vegetables, local, organic. She said, Beck, I'm tanned. I can with I can go out into the sun and not burn. So it really makes it diet has a huge, huge impact, even uh, from preventing us from getting burnt. So you're, so you're I'm like leaning back on my chair right now for those that can't see me. So you're saying that if we eat those types of foods and the ones that you mentioned in that category and we eat organic, eat like locally sourced pro produce, that you don't need sunscreen at all? I would definitely have a little bit. So for example, again, got to read the book. Something like coconut oil gives yep. you an SPF of five. It's a start. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we need, we, but we do need sunshine. We need, of course, sunshine. we need it. So, as you said before, there are ways of uh, increasing absorption. So, because um, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, it needs fat to be absorbed. Uh, so, I tell women on their lunch break, if you can lift skirt up and your lunch break, you know, expose your thighs, uh, you know, if you're at home in the backyard, um, go in your bikinis, even better topless, um, mm -hmm. you know, so much adipose tissue fat in the breasts. Um, but yeah, really exposing fatty areas at about 20 minutes a day. It's not that much. It's not that much. I think we can all make that happen. Even if you leave in, yeah. leave in Melbourne, 20 minutes, you can make that happen. Like you said, on the lunch break, just get out there. This is fascinating. Oh, good. I like it. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. So on the immune system, I know we sort of just went on this whole roundabout, but just quickly going back to the immune system, foods, ingredients, what, what, what are some key things that we should, and like you said, I know there's so many different topics and areas mm -hmm. and approaches we can take and avenues. What are like five key things that nearly everybody could do to just give themselves 5% better? be 10% yeah. further ahead. Absolutely. So especially growing up in Melbourne, there's a lot of fast food and drinking culture, huge mm. drinking culture. Now, alcohol is one of the worst things we can do for our immune system. Uh, I like to explain the liver as like a full-time mum. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Big job. So every time you drink alcohol, it's so toxic to the body that, your liver needs to make it a priority to eliminate it as soon as possible out of the body. Wow. So it's kind of like your full-time mom taking your child to the ambulance. It's mm. got to, you know, it's got to put everything behind, you know, deal with you later, even totally. though it's so much to do. That is how toxic it is. Uh, so limiting alcohol and, you know, a lot of people are having alcohol every single night, um, you know, a little on the weekend, a little bit of red wine is okay. Um, but when people are making it a habit, mm. um, that's um, it's really dangerous to the immune system. When a little bit becomes more than a little bit, then uh, yeah. that's a challenge. Yeah. Okay, so, so no or limit alcohol? Limit to no alcohol. Limit. limit. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of um, antioxidants in red wine. Okay. So there have been studies where they've actually... Um, uh, looked at the microbiome and having uh spirits and and uh and beer significantly affected the oh wow microbiome, whereas having red wine they didn't it wasn't as affected yeah. so it still made an impact but not an impact as, as no large impact. yeah okay yeah. so limit alcohol and if you're going to drink drink red wine yes okay yeah. what else I can what else can we do um Okay, so yeah, local produce, really, really important. Um, sugar. Sugar is so toxic to every single cell in the body as well. Um, so is that a limit sugar or no sugar? Limit. So swapping 
the source of sugar. Again, I put up a really good post. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, Jamie, I about did. which sugars to have yes, and which yes. to avoid, um, especially a lot of artificial sweeteners. Um, you know, and a lot of brands will use artificial sweeteners and say it's sugar free. So again, marketing is really important. Artificial sweeteners are probably one of the worst things for the microbiome. Really affects the gut really really affects it how smart um, is that we haven't put any sugar in but we put artificial sweeteners in for you absolutely we're so good we're taking the sugar out for you we've done such a great job this is so healthy for you yeah yeah so again everything is marketing i really want people to look at ingredients mm. so so important um all right anything else for the immune system um so sunshine yep get sunshine clean Bit of vitamin water, d um clean air um, definitely get a HEPA filter. I've got a really good uh, HEPA filter on my website and a really um, affordable wa a water filter that you just yep. pop on your counter bench so you don't have to attach anything. Mm, mm, um, mm. It does take up some space, but it remineralizes as well. It's got um, mineral rocks and, and that in there. Um, you can get prill beads, which alkalize the water as well. Um, yeah, so clean water, clean air eating local, reducing sugar. Um, and so, so if you do get sugar cravings, again, what is your body telling you when you crave sugar? Um, usually it's magnesium deficiency. So your body's actually yeah. looking for magnesium, which a lot of people are deficient in. Um, so I'm not huge on supplements, but magnesium is something I really recommend everyone to take because it's just too dangerous to be deficient in. We need it too much. Um, so that really important for the liver, the immune system, um, our mental health. Um, so eating greens will give us, and seeds and nuts um, and legumes will give yeah. us magnesium. But yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, supplementing with magnesium. Love that. Um, and um, yeah. That's manage a lot. That's a lot. Limit alcohol, oh. local produce, but it's good. Like you, we're giving people the answers. It's like, don't tell me you didn't know, but you've got six things here. You've got limit okay. alcohol, local produce, limit sugar, the right sugars, vitamin D, clean air, clean water. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> like if you can tick those off in the next week, like you're doing all right. Yeah. You're yeah. going to give yourself a much better chance of um, a stronger immune system. You mentioned alkalizing the water. What's your take on alkaline water, like buying it in the bottle? Is it a fad? Is it real? Is alkaline water a real thing? Is it worth it? What's, cause there's so many stories. What's your, what's your story? What's your opinion? Okay, I have a really good blog on this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is about if you're listening, just go to Beck's website. You're going to learn everything about your body and you're going to live to 150 years old. That's it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So a lot of bottled water uh, is actually just tap water. Um, again, because it's not regulated. So you have to be really, really, really careful. Also the plastic leaches mm. in. Uh, it's just really harmful to the body. So... It depends on, so I've had, I had a patient uh, a few weeks ago and she was eating so healthy and, but her microbiome test came back as um, she was missing a lot of the good guys. And we're thinking, what is going on? You know, your diet's amazing. And then once we got to the bottom of it, she said, I, I was uh, altering my water filter to really alkalized, really alkalized. So um, so alkalizing, so your microbiome is so sensitive to pH levels and temperature. So, um, so I think, uh, I said, reduce the alka, the make it more acidic. So just yeah. like a neutral or slightly acidic, uh, sorry, slightly alkalized, but not too, uh, she was having it way too much. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so that was really interesting to find that link. Mm. Um, so a little bit alkalized is good, but you don't want it. You could too don't much. want it. Yeah, yeah, too much. Yeah. Okay. So alkaline water, like buying alkaline water at the shops, like that's good. Like if you can choose to buy that over normal water, would that be a, a better option? It just depends the source of the water. Mm. The source of the water is more more important to me. Again, because a lot of brands. Uh, are really misleading. So I actually say ditch bottled water. Oh, wow. So you always bring your own bot water from home, like in your own 
for, that yeah. you've already filtered and if you go traveling or if you go out yeah yeah as much as you can for sure yeah we we do the best that we can we limit of course as much as we can but again it's really hard in a toxic world but we do the best we can absolutely let's talk about uh a bit more about the, the gut health and, and bloating because i think coming into crazy silly season christmas and a lot of festives and a lot of dinners and here there and everywhere parties not always the best food yeah. what is a good way to prevent bloating understand bloating for the better food choices for people listening and again sometimes it is hard like you said we do our best with what we've got coming into these times what can people start to think about to look after themselves yeah, absolutely. So making sure you're getting enough sleep. <laughs> okay. Not staying up. Yeah. Um, What's enough sleep mean? Okay. Like, so, is, there, is there an hours or? Yeah. So ideally we're meant to be in bed between 10 and 11. So we're meant to, um, we're meant to sleep when the sun sleeps <laughs> and we're meant to rise when the sun rises. So that's evolutionary. We've been doing that forever before lights were invented. Totally. Um, so we need so much happens to our bodies when we sleep. That's when our body heals and regenerates. Our yeah. cortisol um, replenishes, just all our healing. It's just so important, so important to get um, seven to eight hours of sleep. And especially during the silly season, we're staying up so much later. Mm -hmm. We're just being conscious of uh, getting to bed at a reasonable time. Uh, also, Obviously, people are going to be drinking. So drinking water in between your drinks is really, really important. Um, and I would probably say limiting um, limiting sugar as well. So just opting for, you know, choosing fruit instead of, um, you know, too many desserts. Have, obviously, having um, you want to enjoy yourself, but just don't go <laughs> too, too crazy. The one thing uh, I love about the microbiome and learning about it is that your microbiome, the composition... So do you understand what I mean by the composition? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the composition, so a good balance of good and bad. So we need a little bit of the bad and uh, we, we obviously need the good. We don't want too much of the good and we don't want too much of the bad. So it's all about having a, uh, a diverse, uh, good uh, percentage. So your microbiome can change even within 24 hours. Wow. So when people... Uh, you know, eating really unhealthy. I don't want people to um, get really upset and, and, and you know, judge themselves. Down. Mm, mm. Because, because the microbiome is constantly changing. So just have an epic meal, you know, like, you know what I mean? Just totally. um, make sure you're adding heaps of um, mm. fresh fruit and veg. Fiber is so important. And the definition of prebiotics actually changed in 2017. So before we thought uh, prebiotics were just fiber, you know, increase your fiber, um, have nuts and seeds and LSA and psyllium husks and fruit and veg. But the definition actually changed in 2017. And now prebiotics are actually good fats. So they help to feed your probiotics. So, uh, so good fats I recommend is avocado. Love um, avocado. Yep. Olives, coconut flesh so getting coconut milk coconut cream um nuts and seeds so good fats and then colorful so we call them poly polyphenols which are basically antioxidants in colorful foods so i like to see the microbiome is loving a party you know they love the <laughs> colorful foods. i love that yeah so I'll get patients to swap their white onion for purple onion, um, their white cabbage for purple cabbage and their uh, anything white to darker colors. Um, and that's where we get all those antioxidants and those antioxidants feed the microbiome. So it's all about feeding the good flora and then they'll deal with, they reduce inflammation. Mm -hmm. um, they all deal with, you know, we're constantly ingesting uh, bacteria and viruses and parasites all the time in the in the environment. Um, you know, we might eat some moldy bread that we didn't even know was moldy, you know. Totally. But making sure our microbiome can handle it, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. So it's all about making your immune system robust. So totally. we do that through eating really colorful foods, good fats, um, and then obviously all your prebiotic foods. So that's all your fibers. Um, yeah. So I love that. So if, 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 you know, you get on a boozy night or someone has way too much cake, 
or eats all the ice cream and all the desserts, it's okay because you can you can fix it up the next day and over the next 24 to 48 hours. By so, yeah. do you believe in like the the diets and the cleanses and all that? Like, does that all play a part, or is is it more just feel the body, understand your body, go from a day to day sort of process? Like, what's your approach on that? You mean detoxes and things? Yeah, like that? and like just your detoxes, cleanses. Is it is it a is it a daily thing that you should just just feel it, or is it like no, I'm going to do a detox for three days, five days, a week? Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of research that fasting for three days resets your immune system. Um, so I work on detox retreats here in Byron, where people come for a week. They come from all over Australia, and they just have three juices and a broth a day. Uh, they also get colon hydrotherapy, infrared saunas. Um, so I really recommend people doing a fast um, twice a year, at least. A three-day so, fast. Yep, three, four. Some people can do it up to two weeks. It really depends wow. on you if you can handle it. Um, it. A lot of it is mental. A lot of people think, Absolutely. no way, I cannot not eat for three days. You'd be surprised. I'm mm. to get better because I've seen it for thousands of people over the last few years. Um, so it really is all mental. Even I did a 10 day detox and I thought, no way, I'm not going to be able to not eat for 10 days. And I was, what really helped was having, it was basically just uh, juices and smoothies and broths. Um, but we also had a shot of flaxseed oil twice nice. a day. And that just stabilized blood sugar levels and energy um, because yeah, I, I also wasn't craving, you know, that sugar after mm, a mm, meal. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't craving that sugar or salt. And I really think it was from the oil just stabilizing my blood sugar. Um, so blood you were sugar. having that after with your juices or after the juices? Um, during, like in between. Uh, in, in, okay. Yeah, just two two shots a day of flaxseed oil. Would um, you recommend someone do that even if they're not on a fast? Yeah. In between sure. meals, just in sure. between normal food, flaxseed yeah. oil? Even just adding flaxseed oil to any meal. I'm going to Chemist Warehouse tonight. It's two, two tablespoons of flaxseed oil a day. Um, so important. And, and also our ratio of omega-3 to 6 is completely thrown out with a Western diet. Um, and this is why something like flaxseed oil, which is so high in omega-3, again, omega-3 is so important for the immune system. Um, but we're eating so much more omega-6 food. So like... Uh, red meat or meat in general, um, a lot of peanuts. I mean, how many? Uh, I saw <laughs> so your post about, I, I read it on your website about the peanut butter. I read that. I was feeling, I was very upset. I was, uh, I almost got out of your website. I was like, this cannot be real. No, I'm so <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for telling me what I need to know. I know. That's what I mean by I put information out there that I know people don't want to hear. Uh, and, but I really just want based on research, you know, and this is what I mean by there's so much confusing information. I, again, I'm seeing so many people put peanut butter in their daily smoothies and saying, you know, it's healthy. And I say, wait a minute. Who told you, know, you that? Who told well, me? No, no. The people that are telling you, hey, it's healthy. It's like, well, who told you it's healthy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it's a nut and actually it's not actually a nut. It's a legume. Um, very inflammatory one, unfortunately, but it tastes so good. But is there any goodness to a, a, a peanut butter? Like is it peanut? Is there any goodness at all in there? It's going to be a little bit. Oh, I mean, it, there's protein. There's definitely protein. Yeah. But, and that's um, as far as it goes. <laughs> but other nuts I would choose. There's totally. Actually, totally. Once I introduce people to almond butter, they're like, I've, I've got an almond butter recently. Yeah, almond butter is good. Yeah. Almond butter is good. Hey, I've got a bit of a, a, a hypothetical question. Yeah. You're stuck on a deserted island for six months. Well, you, you get, you're, you're, you're you now, and it's like, hey, back tomorrow, I'm taking you, and we're going to put you on an island. No food, no water, six months. You can take three, maybe five things with you, like produce. What are you taking? Produce? Anything. If you want to bring, you got five things that you can take with you. What like are you food? taking? Food? Yeah, yeah. Food, anything. Any, you got five things, any five things at all. What are you taking? Oh, wow. Um, Six months out. on your, on your, on this deserted okay. island. Um, turn out clippers. <laughs> <laughs> because there's nothing else that can do it, really. Totally. Um, that, is, that is not the answer I was looking for, but that is absolutely fine. <laughs> essentials um i would say oh, probably some sort of 
um, like a fer fermentation kit or something. So I fer <laughs> ferment my own food. Um, oh my goodness, this is so hard, Jamie. Um, yeah, is it pro is it food? Or is yeah, it like you, maybe awesome. maybe food. Yeah, like if there was gonna be a few foods that maybe you would take with you that you would that you know that would help help you last six months. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, sardines. Okay. Yeah, I I actually have I've stocked up. I have a little apocalypse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sure, felt like the apocalypse was coming like, the last few years. That's for sure. <laughs> so I'll tell you what's in it. So sardines. I have a lot of coconut water. Um, I have a lot of nuts and seeds, um, dried fruit, um, and then just like crackers and things like that for the sardines. Yeah. So I'm but why are sardines good compared to tuna? So because it's a smaller fish, it's not exposed to heavy metals. So the larger the fish is, the more... Uh, heavy metal exposure it basically accumulates so shark is one of the unhealthiest so I have like a flake at a fish and chip shop or something terrible terrible yeah so even if it's grilled flesh. not fried like grilled it's all right isn't it no it's what's in the flesh yeah yes yeah, so anchovies and sardines so sardines coconut water dried fruit nail clippers fermented <laughs> kit Nuts and crackers. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're the professional here, not me. So I'm going to go and buy these things and put them in a little stash. I wish I could have some fresh, fresh, but I'll just have to learn what is on the island, what is safe to eat. Absolutely. Um, is there any reception? I would love, <laughs> uh, you know, that uh, an app that shows you what species. Oh, true. Like you just hold your camera up to it. And it's like, that's, that's a, this flower. Yeah. Or that's a, that bird. Yeah, you can eat this flower, you can eat this berry, you can eat this mushroom. Yeah. I love mushrooms. Mushrooms yeah. are good. So I, de detoxing, we spoke about that. Doing a fast, three-day fast. What about dieting? Are you big on dieting? Um, I'm guessing every client's different. Everyone's got a different body. Everyone's got a different story. But yeah. do you believe in intermittent fasting? Like what's your sort of go-to approach when someone says, to you, hey, Beck, I need to go on a diet? Yeah. Firstly, I say I hate the word diet. Never, ever say that word again to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there is, um, there's just such a stigma with the word diet. I know. Just, I agree. It makes me cringe, Jamie. I agree. It makes me cringe. I say eat like what your grandma ate. And I always remember my grandma. She lived till 97. Wow. She's so healthy. Um, she would wake up and exercise and she always kept an organic apple in her handbag. So she never ate out. <laughs> she didn't <laughs> trust the food out. Wow. Um, and yeah, so she would eat really minimal, um, just really she would eat really, really healthy and really minimal. So, um, so I really love intermittent fasting. Mm. It's not for everyone, but again, I really recommend, um, even if it's just twice a week and it doesn't have to be not eating anything. It could just be a juice, mm. um, mm. doing that two or three times a week. It just gives your gut a chance to catch up. It's so, so important. Our gut has such a massive job. And if we can give it any relief, um and just give it any break it's like giving your gut a big hug just totally just giving it a break mm, yeah. Mm, mm. yeah is it is it better to not eat anything to give it a break or eat the right things yeah if you can not eat anything okay or, yeah, yeah so choose to like extend that time of no food compared to trying to eat healthy more often yeah. so just you know skip a dinner skip a breakfast um, just to give it a break. Yeah. But also listen to your body as totally. well. You notice that your blood sugar is dropping, um, you know, just have something light. Um, even if it's just a, uh, like a veggie juice or a fruit juice. Um, yeah. But cold press is amazing. If you can get a cold presser, uh, machine, I would definitely invest in one of those as well. Uh, otherwise you can buy them fresh. Totally. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Yeah. This is incredible. Another thing to add is I know there's a really big confusion over raw versus cooked. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of people are for raw diet. In terms of the gut, 
Um, it takes a lot of energy for the body to break down these raw foods. So I like to do a, you know, have a raw juice, but also have warming foods because a lot of, um, a lot of people's guts are really weak, especially in Chinese medicine. A lot of, if you have a look at Chinese medicine and Asian recipes, they don't have a lot of raw. Mm. I also remember going to Japan last year and I was craving a salad because I hadn't had a salad in. But they in don't a, serve salads there. No, they didn't have a salad. Maybe it's because I went quite rural, but everything yeah. was cooked, like soups and broths, and uh, there was just so much cooked food, and I just needed something fresh because I'm totally. so used to making smoothies and salads. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. So my body was craving and I found a little uh, a Kai place, a Kai bar in Tokyo. And I thought, yes, it was hidden <laughs> away. <laughs> I thought, you just need some fresh fruit. This is crazy. So, so yeah, just that, um, you know, not having everything cooked and not having everything raw. Have, again, having a balance. Um, again, reading your body. If you don't feel right, having all raw, um, yeah, listen to your body. But I really recommend um, having a balance between cooked and raw. Yeah. One thing that I'm taking away from this, and I shared a little bit again earlier before we, we came online, like I went and saw a naturopath and did the intolerance test after I, you know, did my bodybuilding comp and I was, you know, eating a lot and listening now and even looking back, I was eating that much food. I, was, I don't even know how my, my, my body was able to still function. Yeah. you know, turn up and still go to work and some have, somehow have energy. Uh, maybe it was all the coffee I was drinking. Um, yeah. But that was a massive game changer for me to understand me and like my body and what it needs and where it was at and then what I need to do to sort of move forward. Yeah. Is it, I know what your answer is going to be, but should it be on the bucket list and on the, the next couple of weeks list for people to go and see a, a nutritionist, a naturopath, to see someone to get, an understanding of their body? Yeah, I mean, I would love for people to come and see me as a for prevention. Unfortunately, Absolutely. in my Agreed. line of work, I see people who are way down the track. They have tried everything Western medicine I can offer. They've gone through surgery and then, oh, let's give naturopathy a try. You know, that's so I'm dealing from they're broken and I have to slowly put the pieces and back rebuild together. Them. And so it's such a longer journey. Um, and I tell them it's a journey. It's it not, is. it's not a quick fix. It's not one consult. We're going to fix it all. Um, it's a combination and it's it's too overwhelming if you do it all. I can tell you what to do, but you're not going to do it. Totally. So this is why I work. Um, I have three and six month consult packs because I, I want I want us to give us a chance, um, mm -hmm. you know, to see results and get your body to heal. And it just doesn't take overnight. So um, yeah, I love yeah. that prevention over cure. And then also, yeah, get, get in early before there is a problem, like before you you there never really is the right time to go it's always just like go yeah like go and it, understand it, go and learn don't um, wait yeah even if um checking pathology and going over your diet like i think i mentioned before you know a lot of people think they eat healthy but they actually don't because they're the source i'm like where are you shopping you know oh, i'm just going to the grocery store i'm like oh that's the first mistake you know it's so great. Is organic a big thing is it organic or is it the fact that it's fresh both so it's pesticide free and it's and, and it's then it's fresh. fresh as well yeah so it's both it's actually both um so yeah i'd love love for people to just um write it write a diet and let me have a look also let me check the uh, acidity and alkalinity and you know if there's enough fiber and um something i learned years ago about um bodybuilding and the high protein is that if familiar with lactobacillus and bifidobacteria heard of it I'm, but i'm not a not an expert on it okay okay so every time you look at a probiotic it'll say lactobacillus blah blah um, bifidobacteria blah blah so those two families are there's more but they're the two main ones uh so having a high protein diet in as little as four weeks reduces one of those families the bifidobacteria by 50 percent in the wow. month so that is huge. And this is why you're getting all the bloating and the constipation, um, you know, eating those protein bars. Those protein bars are so bad. They're so bad. <laughs> full of, is there anything good in them? 
Maybe one or two things, but again, <laughs> also labeling in Australia, they don't have to label all the ingredients as well. Wow. Um, yeah, there are brands that are uh, becoming a lot cleaner for sure. Uh, and I definitely have little protein uh, balls, but I check the ingredients. Totally. A lot of them have peanuts as well in them. Um, you want to be avoiding soy protein isolate like the plague <laughs> you want to be avoiding that and wow. that's in a lot of, uh, that's in a lot of vegan protein powders um, a lot of people can't digest whey most whey protein powders um, it's really interesting when i studied uh, a colon hydrotherapy i studied with two personal trainers uh, and when we did so we did eight colonics over 10 days and they had both of them had the biggest parasite in the tube about that, like tapeworms yeah, about, yeah. about the whole tube. It's about, it's about half a meter. And people don't know that they're actually, you know, diet makes such a big impact on microbiome and what you're feeding in there. A lot of people think, no way, I'm not going to have a tapeworm in me, you know, but they're sucking all your nutrients as well. Um, so yeah, so diet is paramount and fasting is also really amazing at starving. Um, any pathogens and any uh, viruses and bacteria and uh, parasites um, in the gut. <laughs> it's just so much, Jamie. So I know, I love it. Like it's 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 positive. Like it's great. Like this is what we need. We need to know, hear this stuff because if we don't, then it's like we hear that get an orange for vitamin C from the shops. It's amazing for you. Yeah. But we, yeah. we both know, and you just taught a lot of us now that there's zero vitamin C in that thing because it's a year old. Yeah, terrible, terrible. I like it, I like also, it. Also, because I know you're big on Mythbusters. Totally. Uh, calcium, mm -hmm. calcium for your bones, right? Absolutely, that's like number one, isn't it? <laughs> Grow big and strong, isn't that what they tell you? Oh, goodness, okay, so it's quite ironic that Aussies drink the most milk and have the most osteoporosis. So um, what happens with high calcium? So dairy is not bad, it's the ratio. So the amount of calcium that's in milk, it overthrows all the other nutrients that you need for bone health. So that's why it's making our bones weaker. So we need uh, potassium, vitamin A, um, vitamin K, magnesium, um, we need all those for our bone health. And that this is why eating green leafy veggies has the magnesium and has the uh, potassium and phosphorus and vitamin A and vitamin K. But, you know, greens is honestly the answer. So I really want people to uh, prioritize their plate around veg vegetables. In Australia, we're grown up with meat and three veg or mm -hmm. meat and then whatever else. Whereas I really want people to switch that to veggies like really and veggies are fun absolutely they are you veggies. can do so much with them absolutely and also another thing that's really lacking in australian diet uh is beans and legumes mm, agreed so again they agreed. contain so much calcium so much magnesium so much protein so much fiber uh and a lot of people i see most of them say i don't know i have a little bit of hummus here in there. <laughs> you know, but if they're buying it from the stores it's mixed with canola oil you know yeah, it's like three percent yeah chickpeas yeah. but the rest is other stuff yeah so when you look at uh asian countries they base their diet around legumes and vegetables so i really want to incorporate that uh you know more veggies and more uh, legumes also how to prepare leg legumes is really really important so if you're buying canned um, it's a good start just make sure you wash them really well i came from a middle eastern family where uh, <laughs> you'll see buckets um, <laughs> you know, bowls of chickpeas and all these legumes pre-soaked the night before it's so important and then they cook them um, so we don't mm. we just don't know in canned beans if they're going to be pre-soaking them my money's on they're not going to do it totally cook it pack it and sell it um but this is why a lot of people can't tolerate beans and legumes so they stay away from it and it's because they're just not prepared properly 
So and really like to wash them and, and let them sit like we're, we're talking about a, it's a two minute job to put it in a let it drain overnight or it's a five minute wash that you got to do before you cook it like it's not life changing time that you got to spend on it. Totally, but the yeah. impact is huge like the benefit the reward on the other side is massive. One thing I learned on that as well, like they always say like wash the, the rice before you cook it. Yeah, but yeah. when you wash it and for those again if you've never done it like have a look at how I don't know if dirty is the right word but the color Milky. change milky yeah yeah the color change in the water you'll be very surprised at how milky how white and the loose. water goes yeah absolutely for sure we should be doing that with all our nuts seeds legumes grains <laughs> this is incredible i'm so glad that we've done this tonight yeah. i'm gonna go past chemist where i'm gonna go and buy some stuff and they're gonna be like who are you and why have you got all these incredible like do you know something that you know only certain people know this stuff. Like, oh, I know someone that has told me that this is the stuff to get. Beck, this has been absolutely incredible. Um, guys, if, you know, I know you're listening and you're, you're, you're maybe thinking, even for me, like I'm taking it all in, like there's a lot, right? The best thing that you need to do, and I'm going to do it, is I'm going to make an appointment with you, with you, Beck, and I want you to help me and give you all the information you need to make my life so much better. So if you're listening, watching, whatever you're doing, head to Beck's website. She's got an ebook and a, and a, and a, and a blog or a vlog on, on every topic you need. <laughs> Get it in you. Thanks. I also <laughs> have a 21 day um, gut basics program coming up, launching really, really soon. So the reason why I brought it out is because I get asked all the time, oh, Beck, nothing's wrong with me. I don't have any health issues, but I just want to know, learn how to look after my gut, you know? So I've really made it in a, it's about 23 videos um, that I've put together. And it's really just understanding what the microbiome is, why it's so important to look after your gut health, how it impacts the rest of your body, um, what foods to eat, what foods to avoid, you know, high protein diet, avoid high fat diet. There's just so many diets out there. So just really basic, how to sit on the toilet, what to look out for in your mm -hmm. school. Um, just real basics. I really want you to be a pro and really learn about the gut. Um, I'm going to make sure I put all these links in the description. So if, you, if you're listening or, or watching, go in the description section. I'll have all the links there to Beck's website and all these programs and, and eBooks and stuff. I'll, I'll go back over and I'll make sure you get the exact link for everybody. Um, yeah. Where, Beck, where do people find more? The website, what is it? Social media. Tell them, scream it to them, make sure. And if you're listening, please, please, please do yourself a favor and go follow Beck because I have and I learned so much and you will learn more than what you ever thought you could. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure, um, Beck. This is incredible. Thank you. My, my 2021 has changed and my life has changed off the back of this conversation. So thank you very much. I really appreciate the time. I really do. Uh, and giving everything and, and not holding anything back and giving it all to us. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, you have an incredible evening. To those listening and watching, you enjoy the rest of your day or night. We'll catch you on the next episode. Um, yeah. Book in a meeting with Beck. It's going to be totally worth your time. Beck, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.